the Conquering Moms Grab More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with part three of the quilt carrier. Now we're working on the handles today. So you're going to need your finished and bound, like whether you did it by machine or by hand. Um, the body and sides are all together. Everything's all together. You're going to need your 24 by 3 quarter inch dowels. And option is um, snaps. So you'll find out what the snap is. It's optional. <clears throat> and you're going to need the pieces you cut out, the two pieces that were cut out for the handle here, and the rest of the binding. And I just took all of the fabric that was left like this, and I made it into binding so I would use it all up. But first, before we get into all this, let's do our shout out. Holly at Magic Holly Designs is a very talented long armor. And <clears throat> you guys have got to go check out what she's doing over on her channel. So give her some love and support and encouragement. And... If you like what you see over there, hit her subscribe button. I'm sure she, she doesn't know this is coming, so it's kind of a pleasant little surprise for her. Now, you're going to find her YouTube link in our show notes below, as well as the Facebook group. We're growing rapidly. We're having lots of fun. It's a warm, welcoming group. We have fabric swaps. We now have um, recipe exchanges, you know, the cock crock pot ones that you put in the morning and then you know you, your, your family's had supper for the evening and they're really good recipes that are coming out of that group there's all sorts of community chats like on how to organize your scraps and finding free patterns all that kind of fun and we do all the same things that a regular Facebook group does like by sharing pictures and asking questions taking polls it's so much fun so if you get the opportunity to join because you're part of the Facebook community already please join it. That virtual sewing room, you never know who you're going to find there. The last time I was in there, we're filming this on Good Friday, I met a lady from Australia, another one from BC, Canada, um, you know, a few ladies from uh, North or from the USA. It's been so much fun in there. Now, the other thing you're going to find is the Zoom sew date for our group. Now, that is one where everybody can participate. If you're not part of the Facebook community, it's once a month, usually on the first Saturday. We'll put more dates there as we know what our summer plans are with our grandkids. But we have just a blast in there. We get people showing up from Europe and the UK, and South America, New Zealand, Australia. A couple of ladies came from uh, Indonesia. Plus the North American guys. We have just a blast. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And it's been such fun to have those so dates. We, we all kind of get hang out and it's really great. Um, the other thing is I still talk for free to quilt gills and quilting groups. So if a group wants to have a speaker for free, I do it over Zoom with a PowerPoint presentation. I no longer have a trunk show because my quilts have all been given away to friends, family, and charities. So that's pretty much what we do. But we talk about, you know, making scrap quilts, making different blocks, and of course, donating to charities. So it's been a lot of fun and I have met some amazing talented quilters and I get paid by hopefully getting to stay and see the show and tell. And lastly, I'm working on a collaboration and the blocks that are coming out of that collaboration are beautiful. We're doing it wrong, Robin style and the theme is community. Uh, Michelle from Bits and Pieces, Future Cat from New Zealand, Kelly from Quilts and Cru Kelly's Quilts and Cruises. We're all having just a blast on that. And we're now pattern testing. Now that's going to come out summer, or, you know, early summerish. So that's the date we've got. Now as we get closer to those dates, I'm going to let you know more information. But it's going to be so much fun. So let's come on in. I think I've got covered it all. Let's come on in. Let's get to the sewing today. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. We're going to deal with this last once we get this all figured out. Now, I have checked this and it does work. So what we're going to do is we're going to just simply fold over this and sew this. Now, on two of them, I'm going to show you this. On two of them, we're going to close up this end because there's lots of fabric on this side, right? Like, so... We're going to make this a closed end on both of them and then we're just going to slide it through. So I'm going to get rid of these because just for now, but I'm going to keep them in reach. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line them up and pin, pin them in place. Okay, there we go. Now I got my walking foot on 
this so that I've, you know, got an idea. And this is the one we want to close. So I'm just going to quickly pin this. And there. <laughs> now this side I'm going to leave open. Now my a three quarter dowel, my dowel sits pretty snugly in this in this case and I don't think it's going to fall out. But if you're using a half inch dowel, which is a little bit tinier, right? Then what happens is it might slip out. Okay. I'm just going to line that up just with the top of this handle, right? Like, so I want, you know, okay. <laughs> there. Now I'll get another one, another pin in here. I've got my walking foot on. I should probably uh, reduce the stitches a bit. Okay. <laughs> there. Let's get some quick pins in here. Yeah. So first ones we're going to work on is the ones that stay open right at this end because that's where you're going to slide your dowel into, right? So we're just going to push this under the sewing machine, find my foot pedal because that would be good. So I'm just going to lift this up a little. Now I'm going to try and stitch as closely into that ditch as I can. Back and forth a bit. There we go. Now the pins don't have to be pulled because they're Now it's gonna go back and forth. Here we go. Now get my little scissor and we're just gonna trim that up nice. Okay, so now we're gonna run this off onto this plug. Okay. There. Now this is the end we leave open, this one here, right? Because this is open, that's where you start to slide your dowel in. Now we're going to pop up and get a little closer. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to, you know, go forward a few. Oops, there we go. Forward a few. Back, forward, there we go. Oh, I should pull these out too while I'm thinking about it because next thing you know, I'll be stabbing myself. Okay. Now, we want to pull this one out because what we want to do is we want to go up and around. <laughs> okay, so we want to turn this just a hair. Okay, lift and turn. One stitch, two stitch, three stitch, lift and turn again. One stitch, two stitch. Just making a curve. There we go. Now, as we get closer to the end, we're gonna back stitch. Okay, there we go. Now we're just gonna go off to our plug and we're good. Okay. There we go. Now with this side, because I've turned it this side, I want closed. So this side will start, we'll start working on the closed part first. Oh, there's a lot of bag here. <laughs> oh, good grief. Okay. Yeah, these are great bags. I was really impressed how easy it was to carry a quilt from point to point. Okay, there we go, back and forth just a bit as you start. Remember you're closing the same end. Okay, there we go. Now you get, get a little closer into that turn area where we turn. Okay, uh, lift up, turn a bit. And I just hand crank this because it needs a little bit of hand cranking. 
There. My walking foot here just does not do curves well. Okay, so this side is closed and so is this side. Okay, it's been stitched shut. Okay, so just follow along. Okay. Now you want to leave this side open, right? And your wood, that wooden dowel has to go through. And you just want to back and forth a bit. There we go. Take the pins out. Get the plug in. There we go. Now. Now this end, you want to leave open like this one. So this one you want to just sew off the edge, right? Okay. Now. Okay, now let's get this up onto this. There we go. Ooh, ooh, I hit. Did I hit the needle? Well, I can kiss that needle goodbye. Well, we'll get this done. Oops, there. So my machine hit either the plate or the foot, but now my needle is really dull. So what I want to do, it's still sewing, but what I want to do is once I'm finished this little seam, I'm going to have to change my, my needle, but that's okay. But you all heard that pop. Yeah, that's never good. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to cut here so I can change my needle on my sewing machine and hopefully it'll it'll sew nice and, and even. Okay, I have a new needle now in my sewing machine. Now I'm just gonna start feeding these through and let's see. Just like that. And I go in nice and neat and get the other one done now. There. Yeah. And just magic, like magic, our carrier is now finished. Now, if you wanted to, now there's a couple of cheats you could do here. You could put snaps in here, right, to close it off. You could sew it up, and then when you want to take it and wash it, you have to unpick one side of this and pull them out. I'm going to leave this because I think it's snug it fits snugly enough in here that it's not going to fall out i don't think my wooden pieces handles are going to fall out so now let's get to this little other project that we had okay this is the leftover bits yes i never throw anything out so what i want to do is i want to make a carrier what i want to make like a rotary cutter carrier so but i want to keep all the seams on the outside I don't need my, <laughs> look at this. This is like just wild. 12 for 10 cents. How old is the, are these snaps? And they're still working really good. And they're metal snaps. But I thought, no, I, I don't need them. So what I want to do is I want to take like four inches, maybe five inches of this lining or lining, binding, and just create a little half binding just along this edge because if I go all the way around now this edge will be finished right so let's just take let's just take a little binding here a little binding edge okay so I'm just gonna sew it down just like that and with this and this there we go I'm just gonna okay just gonna run it through real quick with a quarter inch seam Okay. Okay. <laughs> now I'm just going to tuck this end in. Just because, wait, if I'm going to tuck the end in, I want to tuck the end in this way on top. Do it on top because this gets folded over. 
and I want a nice clean little finish there. Okay, there we go. Now, so I'll show you what I did. So all I did now was I created this little thing. Now what's going to happen is when this is just a fold over, right? So now when I top stitch this, this is going to create a nice finished little edge, right? And I'm just going to tuck that in. Okay, just like so. And I'm going to sew it. There we go. Get the elastic out of the way. Okay, well, I'm going to start from this side. And come in. Back. Just a couple of stitches forward. Okay, up. There we go. <laughs> all the way up. Now I'm just sewing this all the way up just along that line. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this off, put my plug back in. So what I've done now is I've created a binding, a little binding there so I can leave it open. Okay, so I put green to green, or the inside to inside, and now I'm going to pin this like this, just like that. So, okay, so here we go. We're gonna go just, basically I've created a bound edge for the opening, right? Just for the opening. Now, I'm just going to pin around this edge so everything stays kind of in place. Okay, here we go. There. Oh, I'll just go right to this side. Now this is, does not have to be perfection. This does not. Now this is an overlap. There's going to be a bit of an overlap here, which is fine. You just make it happen. Make it happen. All your edges are basically going to be finished. So what we want to do is we want to leave a little tail about, you know, yay long. And we want to sew this, right? We want to sew this so we fold it back, right? Okay, so this is where the opening is on your binding, right? And we're just going to put a little binding on this and pop it up. Okay, now it's a little plug out of the way. There we go. Now, take your time with this because there's a lot of bulk there that you're going to come up to very quickly. And you want to put just a quick little binding on here. Now, as you're climbing this, you could have a, little, a few little issues just back and forth over really high areas. If the stitches, if they're going to pop, that's where they're going to pop. Okay. Now I go up to a quarter inch away there and I turn. And I pivot and turn with the needle down. I push my binding out of the way just push it out of the way and I go back and forth a couple stitches just to hold everything in place and now I'm going to come up to a really other another bulky area and I want to be just a quarter inch okay just a quarter inch there and I want to push the binding out of the way pivoting with the needle down of course you know yeah, pivot with that. Learn how to pivot with that needle down. That's the, the advantage of some of these new machines. They have the needle down position. And that, if you're making like this kind of thing a lot, this is a good thing to have. Okay. So we want to go all the way back. Go slowly as you're hitting those bigger, er thicker areas. Because as you come up to this, that's a thicker area. And take your time. Just go back and forth. Go back and do it again. 
You want to give it some security because that's where it'll it will pop. Okay. There we go. Up to the needle. Up to the needle. There we go. Okay. Now pivot again. There we go. Okay. Oops. I'm <laughs> losing my binding. Okay. I don't know if you guys know this, but every time I use up an entire piece of something, I cheer. Whether it go into pantry items or it gets used up in its entirety. Okay, one small battle. Okay, now again up to a quarter. Okay, and now I'm going to clip this quite short. Just like that, because that's the end I'm going to tuck in. This end right here. Okay, so now pivot. And you only need to pivot like maybe a half an inch, but you want that bottom piece out of the way. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to get this back in here. There. Now, so I'm going to cut this just a little bit on the long side. Okay, now this is a piece of, I can iron it and flatten it and cut it into, you know, something that's going to go into my bag. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a uh, seam allowance. Okay, so I'm just going to finger press this in place with a nice seam allowance. Going all the way around, giving it a, just a thumb press. And I'm going to stuff this other piece in side, just like that, right? Because it's a, just a, a binding on a little thing. So now I'm going to go back up here, finish off my binding. There we go. And get rid of this and put this there. Now. So I've got this thing bound. I have a couple of options now. This has been tucked in and it's been tucked in quite nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this over all the edges. Now you can trim your corners if you like. I'm just making, because I'm making a rotary cutter, right? Folder. Because, you know, the, ro the blade goes inside, right? So you can reach around and dig around in your bag and not, you know, cut yourself on your rotary cutter. But... This is how we're going to do this. Okay, so we're just going to top stitch this in place. And you can start anywhere on this. I am going to start right here. And there. now you can top stitch from the other side if you'd like. I'm just, because it's a folder, it's, you know, it's going to be fine. I mean, basically, it's going to prevent me from getting cut. That's what it's going to do, right? Okay. Now, I don't want to hold this, but I'm going to get a little leery about the needle going up and down. Since it's now a bright, new, shiny, sharp needle. There. Pivot. There we go. Probably put a pin in there, couldn't I? <laughs> there, now. <laughs> there, just get rid of that. I'll snip that off. There we go. And 
over the really heavy areas. Just take your time. Go slowly. Hand crank if you need to. Okay, there. Now, I want to make sure that all gets pushed back down into the little pocket I made. Yes, it did. Okay. And there we go. If you don't have a stiletto, you can always use your stitch ripper. That's always a nice little trick for people. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it does not. So, there we go. Okay, to all the bag makers out there, never worry about me moving, muscling in on your, on your content. <laughs> wow. just grab my rotary cutter and we'll give it a test and we'll get to our big to dom moment let's do that first okay that that was exciting with the breaking of the needle in the whole bit but anyways we're done with our quilt carrier it's got two big pockets one pocket could be for a cutting mat the other one could be for those gray wool cutting mat or pressing mats i've got two big pockets well four big pockets actually inside it's all lined now i'm left these open i may decide later to stitch just put a couple of stitches in there close them off but i can make these removable so that when i spill coffee on it it is now washable because i probably will now this little gadget is perfect for this this rotary cutter now i've got it locked but i can just slip this in here and now as i'm rooting around in the bottom of my thing i don't have to worry about slicing my finger you know or giving myself a funny manicure when i'm rooting around because my rotary cutter now is in a pouch that you know is just leftover bits and bobs of stuff right and also too you could put this little needles or whatever pins or whatever here because it's like a mini like needle case as well so i do hope you give this one a try i i was really surprised how much fabric it really used and would i make this again yeah i would um i don't know any quilter that needs a quilt carrier but it, this uh this became pretty cool uh, now you understand why I don't make three-dimensional objects and <laughs> I don't make them often but I thought I really do need this and I was surprised how much I have used Connie since she lent it to me but I do have to lend it back because we're going to be going home soon so I hope you have an absolutely amazing week ahead life goes on really great for you okay you take care until then bye my husband and I would love to thank you for watching in uh, our video and being so supportive of our channel. This has been just such an amazing journey we're on here on YouTube and we just we wouldn't been able to do it without you. So our thanks truly our thanks for you. If there's anything you need, don't be afraid to contact me either through the Facebook book or through email. I, uh, I'm trying to do as many viewer request videos as possible and if I don't do it, you, you need to remind me, okay? So that's not a problem. <laughs> but yes, it's been just absolutely amazing. Tell, make sure you tell your gills I speak for free. I, you know, we have a Facebook group. We do Zoom so dates. And we're, we give out nothing but free patterns. So I hope that you have an absolutely joyful year ahead. And your sewing room, everything is going for you. And life is great. Okay, you take care until we see each other again. Okay, bye.